CBD is not a psychoactive cannabinoid. It, it works with endogenous centers in, within your own body. Your brain actually makes a lot of these cannabinoids. Is it the same as smoking weed? Is it the same effect as taking CBD? Because I think a lot of people think, ah, eh, it's okay, I'll just smoke, it will be the same effect for me. You know, generally, you can't smoke CBD because there's no chemistry or lab time associated with it. Do you get uh, addicted to it or no? No addiction, nothing like that. Because there are people that psychologically can get addicted to marijuana, right? They just like that feeling of quote being high and they want more. They may not enjoy not being high anymore, but physically they won't go through withdrawals. Vince Sanders, the visionary president and founder of CBD American Shaman. Starting with a mission to help his terminally ill uncle, Vince now pioneers groundbreaking remedies like CBD and 7-OH, an alkaloid from Kratom that's offering new hope for safe pain relief. The very first searches I ever did revolved around, there was a lot of cannabis stuff, with, especially with lung cancer. Basically, it would just tell the cancer cell to turn off, right, to quit reproducing. What do you see the future of the CBD industry? How regulated is it right now? You, my personal opinion is they think without regulation that the whole thing will eventually just... The longer you do this, the more you feel and kind of learn that FDA doesn't want... The Avenue of the Strongest is a podcast dedicated to exploring the lives and experiences of the most inspiring individuals from around the world. Each episode features interviews with fascinating guests who share their insights and wisdom on a variety of topics, including education, impact, motivation, health, and learning. Here are your hosts, Annette Chowdhury and Vlad Suleiman. Hi, Vince. Welcome to the show. Right, thank you for having me. Of course. This is a interesting uh, episode, especially for me, because I, I'm really interested in learning more. For our listeners who may not be familiar, I kind of want to start off with the basics here first. Can you explain exactly what CBD is and how it differs from other compounds found in cannabis? Sure. So there's a lot of compounds in cannabis, uh, many of which have you know medicinal values. We seem to find out more all the time. CBD is the cannabinoid, of which there's about 140. The most common one that, at least for most people, knows THC, specifically Delta-9. There's several different THCs, but Delta-9 is what people know that gets you high in traditional marijuana. CBD is not a psychoactive cannabinoid. It works more anxiolytically calming, anti-inflammatory properties. It works with endogenous uh, centers in within your own body your brain actually makes a lot of these cannabinoids you make your own thc mm. even it's called anandamide which means bliss in sanskrit wow. so mm. that you know makes sense right to name it that but see yeah, how cbd is really therapeutic it, it is definitely uh is is a calming mood levelizer and and definitely very good for just traditional uh, pain, aches, pains, mood elevation, just generally makes your life better, really. Yeah, you know, inflammation in general, as you age and depend upon how much you exercise, we, we all have certain degrees of inflammation. And as you know, inflammation leads to a host of other ailments and diseases. So if you can keep that at bay, whether that's from CBD or an aspirin or what have you, and reduce those inflammatory markers, you're, you're going to lead a healthier, longer life. Hmm. And so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to understand who, who is CBD for? Because I, so I, I understand you mentioned some of the, the things like if you're experiencing aches and pains, yep. and I know, and I'm going to ask you in a couple of seconds to share your heartwarming story, because that's really important for us to resonate and get connected with. Uh, but is this for if you're experiencing pain or if you're vigorously exercising, or is it let's just say for me, for example, I feel completely fine. You know, I'm 30 years old. Uh, it, it, should I be taking a look into this? So at, at 30 probably would be the point to start looking at it. You know, when you're, of course, it depends on the person, but when you're young and healthy, if your diet is correct, your body is probably making enough endogenous cannabinoids that you're fine. That as you age, right, you, everything starts to break down. Things don't work as well. Your body doesn't work as smoothly and do exactly what it is supposed to do. Now, part of that, though, is diet. Your body makes cannabinoids out of uh, omega threes and lipids. So if you're mm -hmm. on a diet where you're taking in fish oils or you know 
lipids on a daily basis, then your body has the necessary building blocks to produce it on its own. Uh, most people, unfortunately, don't have diets high in omega threes and sixes, so that you don't have the building blocks to to actually make mm. your own endogenous cannabinoids. So for those people, you take it from the outside, or you know, if if you make it, it's called endo. In other words, from your body. If you're taking it from plant based or or another means, then it's an exocannabinoid. Uh, so exocannabinoid, in our case, we're driving it from hemp, and that's where you're getting your CBD. So as far as who it's for is, you know, it, if you're the younger people, usually don't need it for inflammation or that type of thing, unless, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're distance runners or they're doing something that's causing a lot of inflammation in their body. Uh, I would, you know, I would say the majority of people are probably start to take it about your age, about 30. And the older you get, the more you need it. I'm 60, man. I've been taking it every day for the last, you know, 10 years. I take it twice a day. It's wow. dramatically made a difference in my life. Uh, I mean, you know, my hands and knees and joints work better now than they did 10 years ago. I mean, that, that's mm. a fact. Um, it tr tremendously. I mean, it, it's amazing how much healthier and, you know, had more limber and, you know, that my, my joints are. Um, but people that are younger typically are taking it for stress and, and daily mm. anxiety, right? That That is really... Where you see younger people, you know, we live in a, a fast-paced society with a lot going on. Right. And a lot of people feel overwhelmed. It is very anxiolytic or calming. If you, in, mm. not in a way that like a Xanax or something, you know, or right. a drug type of way, just that you feel normal, you feel good. Like, man, I mm. woke up on a perfect spring day. I just feel okay. great. Yeah, that's the mental state that it generally puts you in. Uh, as you age, again, you know, you start to have more inflammation and more uh, other body issues where you're going to use it. So kind of depends what age group you're in. But, you know, we have plenty of people that are, you know, late teens, early 20s that take it. But but again, it's it's generally for more, you know, anxiety type of issues and stress. Mm. Do you get uh, addicted to it or no? No addiction, nothing like that. Uh, you know, the fact, you know, no cannabinoids are really physically addictive. There are people that psychologically can get addicted to marijuana, right? They just like that feeling of, of quote being high and they want more, but they're not, they can quit, right? Then they may not enjoy not being high anymore, but physically <laughs> they won't go through withdrawals. Okay. And I have one more question about the anxiety. You said it's mostly for the anxiety, for the mood. What about, uh, let's say, instead of the CBD, if I take ashwagandha, is it the same or there is some difference? Ashwagandha? Is that, yeah. yeah. So very similar. Very, yeah. Good, good comparison, actually. Um, you know, a lot of natural products work within your body because you were designed for millions of years to work with these natural products, right? I mean, whether, you know, you're, uh, a chimpanzee or a human or a, a dog or a, a deer. We, these are, if you're a mammal, all these things work very similar on us. So, you know, there, if a, a deer was in, in the woods and, and ran across the ashwagandha or something, it, we would eat it, right? Just yeah. like it does him. Uh, in fact, deer love cannabis. But so, yeah, to answer your question, very, very similar effect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you'll, a lot of times if you, do have a lot of stress you'll notice more mental acuity as well and you know, once you knock that stress down you, your brain mm. just works better this podcast is sponsored by argo prep an award-winning educational publisher serving over a million students nationwide if you're a kindergarten to eighth grade teacher or principal be sure to check out our supplementary workbooks to get your students ready for standardized state testing we cover all subjects from kindergarten to eighth grade Use the coupon code AVENUE for a 25% discount off of all purchase orders. Visit us today at argoprep.com slash store. I'm taking ashwagandha before I go to sleep. And recently I found out that if I take it before I go to sleep, it's so hard to wake up. I mean, it's like... Is that a good thing or a bad thing? It's a bad thing. <laughs> And yesterday, and yesterday I didn't take it and I woke up very energetic. So I decided maybe to just take it during the daytime, you know, so by the nighttime, it's the effect goes down. And, and maybe, maybe it's dosage dependent. Maybe take half as much right. in the evening and see how that works. But yeah, for, functional mushrooms are, are a great product as well. What is functional, functional mushrooms? mushrooms? Like you mean like, yeah. li li like lion's mane? Lion's mane, okay. yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah.
you know, you, tail. Like, there's there's a number of them. Yeah, there's another. Yeah, there's a number of them. That, and that and so okay. So I, I I suppose since we're having this conversation, because this is a great segue to a natural con uh, question here. We're talking about all these things, ashwagandha. We're talking about lion's mane. We're talking about CBD. Like, how does one navigate this? Uh, you know, well, again, we'll take the typical uh, consumer here. Uh, consumer here. There's so many different options. So many different. Do you take everything? Promise. <laughs> or just yeah, I just more. you know. So it's that's so you know it causes a lot of. I, I don't even know. For me personally, it almost causes consumer anxiety. You know, it's just like I don't know what to take. There's like fifty thousand things available, and they're all amazing. Right. Like, how does one navigate at that? Or I, I know you're not an expert in that, but maybe you know. But but it's, I, not only I, on that, it's not only 50,000. There is some mixes which contains like 50 different mushrooms in one in one setting. Uh, yeah. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So kind of the shotgun approach, right? You're getting enough of everything. Yeah. You know, you're you're getting something. But yeah, I I've always kind of believed in the the low and slow approach. Take take you know and stay focused on one thing. If you're taking six mm. different things and you're getting better, which one's responsible for it, right? Right. So, you know, if if you're taking it for stress or, you know, maybe you use CBD or ashwagandha or a host of other things, you know, take take a small amount and see how you feel. And and don't just do it for a day and then bump it, right? Do, right. The very best way is to journal, to keep a journal, mm. keep track of, hey, this is not much I'm taking. This is how I'm feeling. And if you could put numbers on it, even better. Hey, my stress today is a seven. Mm. After taking right. X, it's a 3.5, right? I mean, so you have traceability. And then you can, after several days of that, you can up it if you think you need to and keep track. And then if you're still mm. getting better, after several days, up it again until you find a spot where you're no longer getting better. Or oftentimes, a lot of these natural products kind of work on a bell curve. So you get better, better, better plateau. And then mm. as you take more, you actually get worse. So a lot of times it's kind of push it until you actually notice you get worse and then back, back up to where you're kind of at that plateau or just under that. And if you've done a good job journaling, you'll know exactly how much that is. Hmm. That makes sense. Means I would like you to take us back when you all started this, why you started and how yeah. you dive to the world so, of CBD. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the way I came, it, it's interesting is, you know, although this has become a, a large company, it, it didn't start with even a remote idea as a business. Uh, in 2012, my uncle, at the, you know, was not that much older than me, is more like a big brother, uh, who had smoked his whole life, uh, came down with fourth stage lung cancer. And the diagnosis was pretty grim. You know, they, they said, look, uh, we're going to be honest with you, we're going to do everything humanly possible. But, you know, mo most people that are at fourth stage lung cancer, 90% are going to be gone within six months. So you kind of need to prepare yourself right. and your family. So when he delivered that news, to, to say that I was not fond of that would be an understatement. And I was determined that, you know, A, that was BS, B, that I was going to figure out some way to, you know, prove these doctors wrong. He wasn't going to be part of that 90%. But at the time, my thinking was some type of pharmaceutical product that was just not FDA approved, right? It was mm -hmm. in research or it was approved in Europe or Mexico or something, but not the US. So I literally just lived on Google for weeks, just doing all kinds of small cell lung cancer research and just back and forth thinking that, you know, there was this, you know, magic bullet or at least something that would extend his life, kick the can if you will, another year or something, right? And maybe some type of breakthrough came in during that year and we, you know, could good God willing church. But, you know, as the, he began to fade very quickly and I was not finding the quote magic, you know, that I was thinking was in Mexico or Switzerland or wherever, uh, I became, you know, more desperate and more wide open to, Hey, anything, you know, something, just something that'll, that extend his life. God willing. Um, and interestingly enough, the very first searches I ever did revolved around, there was a lot of cannabis stuff with, especially mm. with lung cancer. And I, you know, in my mind, rather than reading the, that research, I just dismissed it thinking, okay, I, I get it for appetite and chemotherapy and things. Marijuana is good, but you know, that's, I'm looking for something to actually make it live longer. But uh desperation, I started checking or reading some of these. I'll very quickly, I learned about CBD and studies that have been done in Israel and Spain and some in England uh, that really showed tremendous success 
with CVE and small cell lung cancer. Uh, basically, it would just tell the cancer cell to turn off, right, to quit mm. reproducing. Um, and there's good studies on that in breast cancer and prostate. Uh, so I was like, okay, well, how do I get this CBD? Well, in 2012, there was no CBD. There wasn't any place mm. to get it. Um, so when I read, well, this is the main cannabinoid, the number one cannabinoid in wild hemp, we're in Kansas City, and we used to grow a lot of hemp here. We used to produce mm. this. Missouri was either the first or second largest state for hemp production for a century. It was either Missouri or Kentucky, generally. So consequently, there's a lot of wild hemp here. And here, you know, around here, it's called ditch wheat because, you know, kids will think, oh, my gosh, that's marijuana. They'll go cut it and smoke it. <laughs> of course, they don't get high. But they right. had fun doing it. It's an adventure, right? But <laughs> I thought, okay, well, I can do a, a crude extraction here, you know, just grind this up with, with ethanol, with, you know, grain alcohol, and take what I get, result, and evaporate the alcohol off, and I'll have CBD and whatever else. Uh, but it was crude and fast, and, and that's what I did. I, I, I got, quote, ditch weed together and, and just ground it up with uh, grain alcohol and a food processor and then filtered out the plant material and just took that solution, put it in a rice sewer, steamed off the alcohol while it was warm, took syringes and sucked up the resulting black oil, dark, dark green, really, and gave it to my uncle that said, hey, here's the theory. And of course, he was game for anything, right? At the time, I, you got nothing to lose. Right. So he just started using syringes of it, just injecting it in his mouth, tincture-like. Um, okay. As, as often as they could. And it took a while to adjust to the, the flavor, but he got used to it and then a few weeks and was taking lots of it. And he was going for a full body scan every 30 days to see, hey, are these treatments are doing working or do they need to try a different therapy? Well, it had not gotten better until all of a sudden, after we'd been doing this for about 30 days, he went in there like, wow, we got great news. You didn't have any growth this month. We, you know, we... So we're doing halted it where it's, you know, hopefully we can keep doing what we're doing and at least we extend your life. Well, then second month, you know, full body scan, all of a sudden, a lot of these tumors were starting to die. And we're like, oh, wow. we're like, well, oh, wow, this is amazing. Of course, no way to know whether Correct. our, you know, homemade CBD was working or right. what they were doing or a combination thereof. We did this same. After several months, he was pretty much cancer-free. I mean, he had uh, a, a small couple millimeter node in, in one lung and, and like a millimeter in the other. Um, and it was because it was four stage. I mean, it was in his cancer and, and you know, throughout his body and bones and his brain. And, and it had completely disappeared everywhere, but those two small nodules in his lungs. And the what they would do is they continue chemotherapy for a few years afterwards. So that's just protocol, so it doesn't come back. But they still would go in uh, to these monthly scans just to make sure everything was clear. Well, he went in <clears throat> one day, and the very next morning when he woke up, he had a lot of tiny blisters on his arms. And he called the doctor, he called his psychologist, and, and told him, hey, you know, they said, hey, come in immediately. Well, he had apparently got a staph infection while he was there at the MRI at the hospital. Mm. So they sent him to the hospital immediately put him on the antibiotics, but unfortunately, although we had beat the cancer, no one had ever dreamed mm -hmm. he ended up dying of sepsis. So mm -hmm. he ends up dying yeah. of, you know, it was beyond tragic, right? I mean, it was harder to lose him that way than if he had died from the cancer, honestly. But I truly believe and still believe that it was the CBD or, you know, the, the hemp extract that we were making that, that did it. Uh, so I thought, wow, this is just something too good to not get to people. So I mm -hmm. continued to, to make it like that and get it into people's hands, but I, I started really, I had all the time in the world now, right? So I didn't have to rush to slow down and take my time to figure out, hey, how do you really make CBD and how do you how do you do this? And, oh, by the way, is it actually legal? You know, you're talking 2014, everything was illegal, right? In, in a place right. like where I am. Um so then, you know, as I, in 2014, there was a, the first hemp act, but, you know, it had to be grown in Kentucky. It was pretty restrictive. But then, you know, I started to, to find growers and that were working with the University of Kentucky and 
you could get CBD or you could extract it yourself. And, and, you know, I started for that entire year really playing with it and I figured, okay, here I can actually make this at a controlled dose at, in a tincture and, and, and this is what we have. So early 15 comes and at the time I've, I've been self-employed the majority of my life. So I had a lot of these entrepreneurial skill sets at hand. They just had not really been used for CBD and I thought, you know, I, I had a booth that year at the ASD show, which is a large show in, in uh, Hope, Las Vegas every year. And there's everything there. You want to buy a diamond ring or a teddy bear, mm. it's there. So I always kept, I was making uh, e-liquids at the time, and I kept a booth at the, basically the, the tobacco section right next to convenience store. So I kind of got that through traffic. And I thought, you know, this is a great spot to launch the CBD product, but you know, it's an opportunity to get in front of lots of people and, and just see what happens. So we're literally the first week of February and that show in 2015 was March 1st. So um, I don't have, even have really a product. I just have the methodology to make it. So I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to put this out at the, at the show. And I call my graphic artist and I, I start talking to her. Hey, I'd like to, create this and she's like well okay when you know what's our schedule and, and i said well you know the show's in three weeks she's like three weeks to design all this and she's like well you better come over right now so i literally drilled over sat down and then yeah, just started kind of spitballing ideas the look the feel it's natural it's suede it's stone it's leather you know, all these just throwing out what the look and feel and the most interesting thing, really, looking back on it, is she goes, well, what's the name? And I go, Donna, you know what? Although I've been doing this for a couple of years now, I never really looked at it as a product mm. until just now. I go, I've never even thought of a name. And right. she's like, right. well, what just comes to you natural? It just pops into your head. And I'm like, man, I, the only thing that pops into my head right now is medicine, man. And she was <laughs> like, that's pretty good. And I'm like, yeah, but, you know, if if this works out, the word medicine will probably hurt us with the FDA or something. Mm. It'll cause some issue. Right. And she goes, well, what's another name for a medicine man? I'm like, well, another name for medicine man. And she's doing kind of the same time. We're coming back and forth. And I go, a shaman. And she goes, I like, she just leans across the desk. I like shaman. That really, that feels good. It just feels <laughs> right. And at the time we were making, you know, our e-liquids that were all CGMP, not from China, et cetera. And she goes, well, American shaman, right? Probably made in America. I'm like, yeah, that's it. And then, of course, but I'm like, what the heck is American Shaman? What is that even, you know, what is this? So I said, okay, put CBD in there. So it was CBD American Shaman. CBD and American it, Shaman. That there was it. Go. I mean, that's literally yeah. in a few minute conversation. Yeah. Boom. That's how the whole name came to be. And, you know, they, from there, it, you know, they're, it's, it's right now, you know, we own the name. But for the first three years, there, there was times where I'd back. Is that even the right name for this company? But mm. obviously it all worked out. And, I, you know, a, a shaman is a natural healer and, and the right. spirit soul, which is everything we really are. So it really is a, a good fit for not only what we were, but we've become even more that way with a, a lot of different plant-based you know, things. So, yeah, that's kind of the story. And then, you know, that developed. Uh, it was very difficult to go to market with CBD. People didn't want to carry it. They were afraid of it. It's, is it legal? Is it illegal? FDA, of course, always questioning things. So what we found was that the very best way to go to market was with our own stores. And mm. that's pretty much that's how it, it, it started. Those were our points of sale and still are to this day. You know, we, we do have a, a pretty large online presence uh, in we have corporate stores and franchises, and we sell a host of products at this point, right? Not just CBD. I mean, that that was mm. the anchor, and still, to a large part, it is. But now we make, you know, psychoactive cannabinoids and, you know, mushroom mm. products and, you know, our kratom products. And, you know, there's, a, there's a, hundreds of different things that we make. Over 200 SKUs that we make now. 200 SKUs, okay. Yeah. How, wow. how, do, how do you differentiate right now? which CBD is good, which is not, which company is doing a great job, which you one know, is not. Like, there, I always that, like to, that quality ones? Yeah, I like to say, you know, where I was one of the founders of the Hemp Roundtable, which has kind of set the industry standards for how something should be made. Uh, without the CGMP process, we, we did the Hemp Authority, 
well, which is a group that comes in, basically does a full CGMP inspection on you every year and proves you or doesn't approve you. We were one of the very first companies to be, you know, hemp authority certified and, and still are to this day. Uh, so I always say, you know, look at look at the hemp authority stamp because they've thoroughly gone through you. I mean, it's a, a pretty rigorous schedule to to clear them every year. And that's the very first thing I would look at. You know, another big differentiator with us is <clears throat> we use nanotechnology. And the reason for that is oil-based products like cannabis aren't very well absorbed by the body. Yeah, in fact, mm -hmm. you know, there's good studies on it. If you hold an oil under your tongue as a tincture for like 90 seconds, you only absorb about 10% of it. So the other 90% mm -hmm. literally goes down the stool, right? It, it'd be mm -hmm. like handing you a $10 bill and giving me back a dollar change. You know, it's not a great deal. So early on... STBD was extremely expensive. And so it was always, how do we get the pricing down? And then one day I looked at the problem in a different way, more solution oriented rather than, hey, let's get the price down. It's like, well, hey, how about let's make it in a more bioavailable form so you don't mm. lose 90% of it right out of the gate. And that's what led me down the, the nano kind of rabbit hole and made me start looking that way. And man, about a year, we figured out how to do that. We're the first company in the world to ever nano a cannabis product or any oil-based product for that matter. And that's really been our anchor. It is just so effective mm -hmm. and so fast acting that it, it is what kind of put us above everybody else. That's what really pushed the brand is that, man, this is something that you can take and in minutes you start feeling it because it goes right into your bloodstream. And because you can take less, it's less expensive. It goes further. And it's what this is this now it's it's still in liquid form you drink it or it's liquid drops? so yeah so you just take you know you take a cup and the way i personally take it i put you know half an ounce of water in there i mm -hmm. squeeze my my liquid water soul in there kind of swirl real quick and i just shoot it every morning every mm -hmm. night twice a day and that's how we recommend everybody take it i think for everybody who's listening and not listening or watching i think we have to tell them is it same as smoking weed is the same effect as taking CBD because I think a lot of people think, ah, it's okay, I'll just smoke it, will be the same effect for me. Right, yeah. No, it's completely different. And of course, you know, generally you can smoke CBD. I mean, that because there's no chemistry or lab time associated with it, actually smoking hemp flour is the cheapest way to get CBD, mm. right? If you don't mind mm. inhaling it and doing that kind of right. stuff, that's actually okay, that your best avenue to to enjoy C a C a CBD, but most people are going to smoke CBD flour a couple times a day. Mm -hmm. yeah. I also heard about the apricot, uh, apricot seeds. Did you hear about it? Yeah, also, apricot like, seeds, yeah. I, I do know about apricot seeds and it's for cancer and stuff. Yep. Yeah, I did hear about that also. I think they also prohibited it in, in U.S. or something like that, right? Well, the thing is, is it's also cyanide. Right. So if you it's take poison. enough yeah. of it, you obviously would die. So it's yeah. right. Right. Well, let's definitely not lead this conversation down <laughs> the wrong path. Right? We're Please, no, death, no, right? no apple seeds, no peach yeah. pit. Is that is it right? A, a, a pit yeah. and a peach. What, apple seeds a also apricot. Yeah. Yeah. Apple seeds. It also has right. No, an I, apple seeds. Yeah, apple seeds. Same yeah, thing. If I'm not mistaken, I mean, yeah. You're apple right. Seeds you're I don't right. know how many of them well, to die. Well, right, but again, I mean, you know, if any you bad apple actor and take apple with yeah. apple seed. I mean, nothing is wrong. Right. No, I mean, yeah, a couple probably won't hurt you, but I probably wouldn't recommend you eat apple seeds. I don't know. Correct. Have you ever tried to eat an apple seed, Flat? Did you eat Always one? Always when I'm when I'm eating apple, I'm eating everything. You eat the seed as well and the core? Everything, yeah. Really? You eat everything. All I right, mean, I just leave this, uh, how you call this? The stem at the yeah. very top? Uh-huh. All right, maybe let's leave out the seeds as well next time. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> You're probably going to need CBD to treat whatever all those apple seeds you've been ingesting i don't know Flat. <laughs> but the, actually in my in my childhood always i've been told that at, when you eat at least eat one or three seeds of apple and you will be healthy all my childhood really? i was hearing it hmm. maybe well, i have I, I have no it's... idea but i don't know that sounds possible I, I, I... <laughs> yeah. but I, I let's and i want to talk about the the bigger picture here because you know this is not about because I, I know you speak or I've read articles where you speak about the importance of non-addictive low risk treatments for people who actually need this. And CBD is a is a category that really fits in and is, is a possible 
uh, safer right. alternative to you know traditional medicines. For what sure. do you see? What do you see the future of the CBD industry? Uh, how regulated is it right now? And then. I'm assuming that C well, CBD is everywhere now, right? Like I, I, we're, we're in New York City, CBD so everywhere is, we go, yeah. I see CBD plastered everywhere. But r right now, how involved, how tight is the regulation around CBD? Is it you don't need F people, you don't need FDA approval? Yeah, it's kind of like the supplements I mean, category. really, it is not at all. Unfortunately, we've been asking the FDA for supervision for years, literally. It's okay. Uh, they refuse to do it. You know, our personal feeling is at the behest of big pharma, but. Um, Barring, barring the FDA or someone getting involved, there's, you know, the only thing you have is good actors that self-regulate. And that's mm. what the HIP authority is all about, is trying to promote self-regulation within the industry so that you know, hey, these guys are doing it the right way. You see that HIP authority label, okay, they're they're doing it the, the right way. They're, you know, they're, they're doing Kim proper testing of C of A's and pathogens and, you know, this product is safe. Not only is it safe, but it's, it's, Correct. If it says it's 10 mm. milligrams per serving, it's 10 milligrams mm. per serving. Yeah, I wish there was a lot more regular, and not for CB. I'm, I'm saying more of a general scope. Same thing in the supplements category. You know, you can oh. sell vitamin D, vitamin C, vitamin E, NAC. They've done tons of research where, you know, someone says it's 500 milligrams, but the lab tests show it's 20 milligrams. Correct. Or, or you can have an extreme high dosage. And, it, you know, again, uh, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm just one consumer here, but it seems pretty bizarre to me personally that these things are not more regulated because you're ingesting this. And right. if you had any bad, again, nobody starts a company trying to poison people because that company would not last long at all. And right. end up in right. prison. But still, you know, this seems like uh, perhaps in general, the whole supplement category needs some more regulation and you're pro regulation for this space. Correct. Or, yeah. Well, I'm probably one of the few people in one of the few industries that actually wants the government want to regulate them yeah. right mm -hmm. usually it's like back right. off we don't want government regulations we're begging for regulations right. the fda just won't do it hmm. I, so I what's the reason of... that they will not do it i think it's it's i oh, think that ahead, you, my personal opinion is they think without regulation that the whole thing will eventually just destroy itself the industry will collapse right um and to a large part that's happened too right i mean that CBD industry was going great guns in 2019, and <clears throat> since then it's just kind of declined. <clears throat> Part of that is the market has grown more broad, right? Because there's more companies now. We're to a point now where you're starting to see companies drop out, and more longer-term companies like us kind of pick up that black, if you will. But yeah, I, I just say you know they don't want it. They they're pro prescription drugs and anything they can do to, to slow a natural industry they're going to do. I do want to talk about, I know you mentioned that we were uh, looking earlier of a new product called, is it 7-O-H? Mm -hmm. so so I'm kind completely of like, unfamiliar with that. So what, yeah. what is 7-O-H? Is so it out yet? It's a new product you're working it on? It is out. It is out. And we do sell it at our stores. And uh, there, there's quite a few products out there at this point with 7-O-H. So the way we came up to it is, you know, I I had been studying kratom and mitragynine, which is the main alkaloid in the kratom leaf, and trying to see, you know, what initially I just understood that it, it was a tremendous painkiller. It might offer some ansiolytic properties and, and, and that type of thing. So I started reading a lot about it, and I ran across a paper from 2019 that the National Institute of Health had done. And they looked at mitragynine as a potential opioid replacement. And what they found when they did the rodent study is that, yes, it did seem to be great for both pain relief and potentially like mood elevation. But when they did blood draws and sacrifice animals and studied the organs, what they found was that 10% of the 708 or the nitrogynine that the rodents had ingested was converted to 70 h by the rodent's liver, by the liver enzyme. Mm. Mm. So what they determined was, we believe all these actions are from 7-OH. We don't think mitragynine is doing anything. We, we look at mitragynine as a pro-drug 
that your liver is actually converting a percentage to a, a quote, real drug. So they suggested that Big Pharma look into 7-OH as a novel opioid replacement. Uh, and so I started doing research because I'm like, well, there's no sense in me going down this you know, rabbit hole if Pfizer or somebody's already working on it. Uh, but what I found is I couldn't find anything. And so we dove in and we figured out how to produce 7-OH and some other alkaloids uh, from Kratom at this point. And now I can give you a very targeted effect of just a single molecule that does what you want it to do, but nothing that you don't want it to do, right? I mean, that, that's a problem with a, a pro-drug like metragynine is, well, your liver is converting a certain percentage of it to what you want, but the other percentage is getting converted to things you may not want. And that's mm. where you start running into more side effects and things off target effects this is what they say. So... Uh, we launched 7-OH and, uh, you know, initially, like I said, we were looking at pain, but what we found out, it was a tremendous mood enhancer, mood elevator, energy focus, uh, just a general all-purpose life is better type of product. And I truly never seen a product with the type of sales that says it, it uh, you know, we had a 10-year lead with cannabis products and I've just never seen anything move like this does we are actually doing more sales with 7-OH than we are all the cannabis products combined wow. and we're talking about something we've been doing for a few months versus a decade so, and 7-OH wow. so it's obviously different from CBD it's yeah, it's a completely different plant it's from Kratom uh, which Kratom, Kratom, uh, Kratom is a member okay. of the evergreen family uh, in the coffee family you know just caffeine is an alkaloid uh, this is an alkaloid. There's a number of different alkaloids in, in the tree. 7-OH is one, uh, but found in small amounts. Your your liver just generally metabolizes it to a higher percentage. Uh, but it can be found in nature. But does it mean that you have to take both CBD and 7-OH? It really depends. Uh, you could, you, it's again, I would always recommend going low and slow with one. And if you're getting the effects you want, there's no sense to add a second product. If not, then you can always add a second product or you can drop the first product and try the other product to see if it'll work by itself. Less is more, right? I mean, when it comes to supplements and things, the less you take, the better off you are, right? Because again, you're back to less potential side effects or other issues. Uh, you know, so if you find, hey, this worked better than that or works fine without that, then stick with that. But if not, then there's no reason you can't start to blend and do your own experiments. I, I'm just out of curi uh, genuine curiosity. I wonder from the logistics side, because I, so I, well, I will take the specific example of you launching 7-OH. What, what, what does that look like? Do you have to go through laboratory testing? Because, you know, this is something that you, right? I, just out of curiosity. Just, yeah, no. It, yeah, I, I'm trying to understand like the R&D part. Yeah, well, R&D is a lot, but I mean, this this is a, a very complicated thing to make, but um, it took a lot of R&D and, you know, to, to figure it out. But as far as the FDA, uh, they're not regulating any creative product either, just like, you know, hemp and cannabis. So it, it's, as of right now, kind of a drift. What I would like to see is a regulatory body, an industry body that did self-regulation and if you could comply and pass that, then you know, hey, this is a good brand. So are you saying that I can uh, literally open up tomorrow a, a company uh, and and sell something that's 7-OH and just make something up and sell it on the market? Like Theoretically, theoretically, theoretically you could speaking. sell any Kratom wow. product, right? You could just... Because there is no regulations. There's no regulation. You could get some Kratom lease. <laughs> you could put it in right. a bag or whatever and, and sell it. Pretty yeah. insane. Put you know, it in a capsule. Know, yeah, it, it's uh, a shame that um, know, our government hear, doesn't look at natural supplements in a regular you fashion. An, you want to hear an interesting story? We're, yeah. we're in the uh, we're in the publishing space, so we publish workbooks, kindergarten to eighth grade, math, science, a lot of academic subjects. So these are physical w workbooks that we ship out. 
we did a launch with Costco nationwide and all their stores for some of our books. But that's not, the funny part was Costco required us to do lab testing on our paper materials, <laughs> wow. we, which we had to submit to make sure that they met all sorts of like environmental qualifications and a couple of other things. I, I'm just it's it's funny. I mean, of course, I guess it's Costco, so it's very they regulate probably every product category that comes in. I get it, but. It's funny we're talking about you know CBD and the supplement space, but here we are selling workbooks, and uh, you right. know a retail a nationwide retailer had us undergo lab testing. But <laughs> it, that, that, just yeah, no, that. that's it. I mean, that's just the degree of professionalism that a Costco operates at, right? But right. unfortunately, yeah, right. absolutely, there is no nothing like that in in the the natural alternative space. Speaking of regulation, what do you think is necessary? Which uh, regulation, which protocol, what can protect consumers, in your opinion? Like, what should be done? Well, what could protect consumers would be if the FDA would take protecting consumers serious and would look at these products and decide what was good or bad and put out the proper guidelines and oversee industries that they follow them, right? Whether that's Kratom or cannabis or ashwagandha or kava or a host of other you know peptides or there's a million things out there right so as i are... understand there is no regulation at all not just for the cbd but for all natural correct there's really, there's really no oversight it's everybody's just kind of freewheeling so what you have to do is hopefully that you're dealing you know do your research a good, that a good actor company yeah right. you're dealing with a reputable company that is doing it the right way and how do you see the future of plant-based medicine evolving? Will it grow? Growing, Growing, yeah. Well, there's a caveat to that is as long as the government doesn't suppress it, right? As long as they allow it to be, the demand for natural products, supplements you know, to replace you know, prescription drugs and that type of thing is, is very big. And more and more people are, are turning to natural alternatives. They find they, they're more efficacious and they have less side effects. And they're more affordable, right? I mean, it's just better all the way around. Hmm. You know, I also know that this topic, like all this money, Hawaiian and CBD and everything is, you know, it's still a taboo for a lot of people. And what kind of like trainings or education programs maybe you're doing or educating the consumer because of, because of this resistance from the consumers? Correct. Yeah. Well, it requires us to do a lot of education, which is a good part of how we've built this company you know we're mm. probably more than anything an education company right we we educate the consumer how the what the product is how it works why it works how you should take it and, and you know the beauty of having a brick and mortar store or a very good customer service even online is that i can answer your questions if this isn't doing this or it's doing that then we can help navigate those fields to get you a, a product that works appropriately or at mm -hmm. least give it the best shot. You know, maybe that's not the right product for you. And then we can find that out together as well. Do you have a lot of case studies where it showed nice results? Like we've done a lot of studies. Yeah, we've we've done a lot of studies. You know, a lot of them are more to prove that it doesn't hurt you than to prove mm -hmm. it helps right. you. Because mm -hmm. that's you know, that's where right. that's... people like the FDA are gonna come after you. They're gonna say, Oh, it's creating yeah, it's hurting liver enzymes or creating this disease or that, or, you know. So you really have to, you know, we've done all the grass certifications on both the CBD, but also on the nanotechnology to show that, hey, even when delivered in this form, this highly bioavailable form, that it's very safe. Mm. Speaking about the 7 I, I know you, we mentioned, you mentioned earlier about the 7 h and the liver playing role. I'm assuming that there's been studies done with dosage, safe dosages that where you're you're not going to cause harm to your liver because that's that's a big thing that's coming that's a up big across. Thing. It's that's a, a big, big thing. thing, right? Right. right. Yeah, thing. and we on the CBD side ourselves and Charlotte's Web and Elix and all a couple other companies um, several years ago, FDA was saying, "Oh, we think it could cause liver enzyme issues." So we did mm -hmm. a study. Uh, it was a very expensive study. I mean, it was, you know, several hundred thousand dollars for each of us, which not only showed no liver enzyme issues, but actually improved the liver enzymes in a higher functioning liver. And, and we, you know, made that public. We also turned that study into the FDA, which never even commented on it. 
Mm. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, it just kind of is what it is. You, you begin to, the longer you do this, the more you feel and kind of learn that FDA doesn't want to regulate it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Vince, this has been a great conversation. I want, looking back at your journey, if you can keep, if you can give one piece of advice to your younger self, whether that's 10 years or 30 years ago, what would it be? Well, um, yeah, just, just stay the core, believe and stay the course, right? I mean, you, if you, if your attentions are right and you believe and you, you keep your head up, you keep pushing forward, you're going to have a lot of challenges, but somehow, some way you always overcome them if you're on the right mm -hmm. path. Vince, we have a tradition on this podcast where a, the previous guest gets to ask any questions to the current guest. And then I will ask you to ask any question that you want to our future guests. So oh, the wow. question here from the last guest is, what is one simple thing that makes you happy? Yeah, one simple thing, honestly, uh, being with my dog. Hmm. <laughs> and if you have any question here, you can ask to the next guest, what question would you like us to ask? Wow. Um... Are these all entrepreneurs or the educators? All or? over the space, doctors, entrepreneurs, athletes. You, it's uh, name it. Wow, well, <laughs> you, you know, probably it. if so, it was, you know, is there? You, you can make any question you want. It could be CBD specific. It could be very vague. It could be very bizarre. Right? Is there you know any one trait that you recognize that you have that is contributed to your success? Mm. Great. Yeah, we'll go ahead just, and ask that to our next self discipline, guest. or is it you know creativity, or you know whatever? Yeah, you know, I, I, I have a pretty good idea. You know, of several of them. Most people, that no matter what they do, probably their success came from. But interesting question. Mm -hmm. I think take some introspective yeah. thought. Yep. No, great question. We'll be sure to ask that to our next guest. Vince, please let our audience know uh, where they can find you. Anything else you want to share with our guests, please do so. Sure. Yeah. You can uh, direct on our website, cbdamericanshaman.com. You can get me directly at vets at cbdamericanshaman.com. And uh, yeah, I'd love to, anybody that wants to reach out, please do. Great. Well, Vince, thank you so much for this conversation. And uh, I suppose my, uh, I'll, I'll have to, I'll have to look into 70H and see if that's something I should try. Yo, you'll, <laughs> you'll enjoy you, it. You, you might need it, Vlad, you, from I will try Apple first, seats. yes, and I'll tell you after. <laughs> yeah. So you see, I'm, you know, I'm on the complete opposite spectrum. Uh, for me to take any kind of in the supplements category, I have to do like a hundred hours of research. I'm over exaggerating, but you know, I'm on that com complete side of the uh, the other spectrum. And Vlad over here, you know, he takes like 30 40 pills a day i don't know what he's at right now he he's no, eating apple 30, seeds i don't know i'm vince i'm gonna have to have a conversation with vlad after this because <laughs> he, he, you know he what, may vlad... talk over that that uh <laughs> right. point exactly you know what vlad i'll spend some hours doing research for you whether or not ap eating apple seeds uh is is safe i've been doing it for already 35 years and i feel great and i am Whatever doesn't kill you only makes you stronger, Vlad. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, Vince, this is a great conversation. Thank you so much. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks Thank so much. You. Take care. Bye-bye.